Hello everyone, and here we are up to part number 11 in this series. We are getting to the point where we're going to actually cut foam though. Uh, we're going to go back to SketchUp one last time just to uh, obtain the measurements of the blocks that we want to cut. Then we'll move straight away into cutting out those blocks. Each step of that process, of course, is going to be shown. And this will be a shorter video than usual, I promise. Well, here we are back in our old familiar SketchUp workspace. The only thing that we're going to do here right now is figure out the dimensions that we're going to need for our foam blocks. There's no need to make the blocks overly large. It just wastes foam nor do you want to make them too small, uh, the obvious result being that you don't get the entire cutout. So we'll come over here and select what appears to be the tallest and widest of our uh, individual uh, templates. Of course, you could do this just by measuring the templates that you've already printed out and uh, checked out that way. But again, easy way here, come here, and here. Now that's about 138 point something millimeters, but we're going to make it 150. So that will give us some room top and bottom um, on the, the foam block. So the foam block is going to be about 150 millimeters tall. Now we'll come over here to the widest point and figure that's about 99. Well, we're going to do that at 115. Again, these are arbitrary numbers, but it gives um, a small amount of space on both the top and the bottom of the block of foam that we're going to cut all of these out of. And recall, we had special widths here in the front because we've got a couple of blocks here that are not the full 58 millimeters wide. We've got this one, this block here, uh, is going to have to be cut at 28, and then this one is going to have to be cut at 20. So make a note of these to yourself, and do the same thing if you're working with the XPS dimensions. You're still going to end up with a couple of oddballs up here uh, in the front. So when you do that, make a note, piece of paper that you're going to need couple of, uh, of blocks that are thinner than the 58 millimeters that we're going to deal with for most of them. And that's all there is to it now. So uh, that's about all for SketchUp right now. We will only be returning to this now if uh, you want to use the technique that I use to lay out the uh, actual decals. You can come in here on this plan view, lay out, uh, this is a Japanese zero, so you're going to be able to lay out the meatballs, uh, any sort of decals that you'd like to make. Easy to lay out, easy to do, and very easy to attach. And I'll show you how to do that too. So we're all done with this for right now. Okay guys, notice that we're outside because you don't want this stuff floating in the air all over inside your shed. Let me move this up here one more time so you can get a look at it. It's just inexpensive spray adhesive. Uh, Walmart has their own brand, but Duro has uh, been around for forever. Inexpensive spray adhesive. This is some of the 20 millimeter foam that I had in sections. I've got lots of foam laying around, so I'm going to laminate up different sizes. You just pick whatever you've got cut up, laminate it up, but laminate it before you start cutting the blocks out so that you can get a nice uh, even uh, cut on your blocks and a well dimensioned blocks. Now, here's the thing. You don't want to spray a lot of stuff on this. You want to keep it well back. Now 
nice light coats. Now we'll do the same thing with this one. Nice light coat. Don't trap any of the solvent inside these foam sheets. Now they're ready to stick together. Ignore the noise in the background. That's my phone ringing in. Sorry for all the background noise outside a moment ago, uh, but I'm not going to reshoot that again. Uh, my neighbor is driving his lawnmower around all over his lawn like a uh, like he's at a toy show. But it doesn't take a mechanical genius to uh, stick two pieces of foam together with spray adhesive. So. What you saw was probably good enough for a six-year-old to do it. So I'm sure that you guys won't have any problems at all. So we're going from our stuck together piece of uh, now 40 millimeter foam, 220s, 40, okay? The rest of this video, in order to keep it to some reasonable length, I'm going to just use the white 58 millimeter foam from here on out. Those of you that are following using the XPS like this, the laminated foam, all you've got to do is laminate up your sheets and do the exact same thing that I'm doing, except you'll have more, since they're thinner, you'll have more sections, but it'll be the exact same thing. And when I get done, I'll show them all anyway. I'll show the XPS and the EPS foam. But right now, we're just going to start cutting up those foam blocks. All I've done is come in and put a, uh, a piece of uh, blocking here on the side just to keep this straight as I'm moving it under the hot wire. It's not absolutely necessary if you have some other way of keeping it straight. And lining it up here, the power supply is on, but the power switch that actually lights up the wire is down here. Uh, the first time you grab this wire like this, when it is still energized, will be the last time you grab it like that when it's energized. Plus, these power supplies usually have to uh, have a load attached before you turn them on, and this is just a good way of ensuring that. I've got a small switch here on the side, so now we're all set to make the first cut, and there it goes. And it goes right through. Okay, now, and once again, you can't even you can see the seam there, and the hot wire goes right through it. So, laminating this, there's no problem. Now I'm going to set up, turn this off, I'm going to set up another limiter out here for the width that I want to cut. Now remember, I have to write all this down because uh, I'm so forgetful I can hide my own Easter eggs, but this is going to be 115 millimeters uh, wide and 150 tall, so I'm going to set this to 115 millimeters and just make some slices. We're going to need, for the XPS models, we're going to need 13 full 40 inch segments and then 120 and uh, 130 uh, segments. So we'll, we'll do that and get it going right now. Here I'm just making some measurements to, uh, to space out my end block to, uh, to help with measuring all this. Once this is done, then just start whacking away. It's really quite important to make these measurements 
as accurate uh, as you can. These blocks need to be cut up very accurately or at least as accurately as you can to make sure that everything lines up properly. Once all the cuts are done in one direction, you set up the table and get everything ready to cut the other direction. I cut the narrow width first, so now we'll be cutting the 150 dimension of all of these blocks. Since I already had that XPS foam right here on the board, I went ahead and chopped it up first, even though I said that I was going to do the EPS first. So here we are back again doing something backwards, but that's that. So now I'm going to chop up this EPS, and again, I'm using foam that I've got laying around of various sizes. There's no particular size you start with. You start with something that you can accurately cut on your board. Uh, I'm doing that with something that I can accurately cut on my board. And so it goes. Okay everyone, after you're done slicing and uh, dicing some foam blocks, you're going to end up with something that looks like this, except, of course, your stack will, uh, will only be one sort of foam or the other. And also, you're going to have a pile of these, and that uh, is a set of templates cut out of poster board, tag board, it's called in some places, but that's all you need to get started now all done once again in the next episode we're going to take those templates that we've had such a, a long time looking at and the foam blocks that we just cut and we're going to marry them up and start whacking out actual shapes so if you've stayed around this long Maybe things will be more interesting next time. Thank you.